Chris Petri here. Welcome, everyone. Come on in. We're going to have some fun in the studio. <clears throat> We're going to create this beautiful uh, painting, watercolor painting of a classical pianist, uh, Emil Galels. He's from Russia. He was uh, known to be one of the world's uh, greatest uh, piano players of all time, classical piano players. So um, <clears throat> we're going to uh, paint this painting. I think we're going to have a great time. So the first 10 seconds of the video, I have the uh, picture, this photograph up on uh, the first 10 or 15 seconds. You can hit pause at the beginning of the video if you want to watch this full through and then go back and then you start out the video again and you can just stop on the uh, pause on the uh, first 10 seconds or so. So this is just a great um, fun painting to do. You can really substitute any favorite musician you have. Um, it works with any, um, this, ex the, the excitement of this is actually, you know, the feel of like a concert and there's the, you know, the beautiful uh, classical grand piano and Emil Galel's playing and, uh, you know, all the crowds there cheering and it's just a great time. So it kind of brings a lot of like emotion and excitement into the painting. So as I think of this, I think of, um, uh, a couple DVDs I have of Emil and concerts that he's done in Moscow, in Russia, where they were videotaped, and this is one of them. This is, I believe, uh, Live in Moscow 3, and um, that was at the uh, Great Hall of the uh, Moscow Conservatory was the location it was filmed and where he played. And so, uh, you know, this to me is exciting, so when I'm doing this, I'm going to have a little bit of that, you know, musical sounds going through my mind, the melodies, the piano playing. It'll kind of be really fun for me to do. And again, if you want to change and do a different artist, maybe your favorite piano player or maybe a um, and some some other musician. I guess it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, this particular, you know, photograph. You can pick any, you know, photograph online or from books, magazines, etc. Um, but we're going to try this one out. I think you'll have fun doing this one. This one's pretty simple. You know, we're just going to focus on the piano and uh, Emil Gulal's playing in concert. We're not going to paint the crowd in. Um, it's a lot of details in there that we really, we can just kind of leave the main focal point, uh, the, just the piano, the grand piano and Emil playing. And then we can just sort of make it a nice soft diffuse background. And we can, if we label the painting, whatever, you know, you can label the paint, you know, the painting in a, an exciting name. And then you'll just know that, all right, it's a concert. You could put like Emil in concert, Emil Galel's in concert. If you name the painting that, well, then we know it's already, it's a concert. We don't have to kind of see people in the background necessarily if we're trying to do a painting that's going to work for us. So what I'm saying is I'm trying to not get too bogged down in details in the background here. I'm just going to try to do Emil and the piano, his grand piano here. So again, we started out <clears throat> as we always do, our source of light is actually a spotlight and it's uh, the spotlights coming from this direction and it's uh, shining on Emil on, uh, on the front of his um, body here as he's playing and we also got our points on our tape. So we have Fabriano watercolor paper, rough, extra white paper. Um, it's about a five by seven, six by seven, six by eight. You can make this larger or smaller according to how you like to paint. And so we just have our piano, top of piano over here. We make a mark on our paper approximately the same. So even if you go with a large painting and you use large paper, you're still going to make your divisions the same way. You'll look at, even if I had a large piece of paper here, you know, let's say a 18 by 24, I'm still going to use my one third down from the top is the top of the piano. And I'm still going to say that the bottom of the piano is one third across the bottom of the page to the right from the left side. So we're going to scale things the same way we would if it's a smaller size or a larger size. And, uh, so we're going to continue here, and then we have uh, the top of uh, Amo Galel's head is here. So we have that. So he, this is going to be a really a beautiful painting, lots of subject matter filling the rectangle here. We want to avoid those paintings where we just have a little tiny subject matter in the, in the painting and all the rest of the paper is empty. We want to definitely avoid that. And we're going to continue on here and 
we'll start out. We'll start out with Emil, so he he's here. So there's some space behind him along the, the edge of the paper. So we'll just notice that. And he his head is orient his head is here. So he's got uh, I'm just doing a really rough uh, sketch here. I'm not I'm just getting that oval shape for the head. We can fill in the details as we go, but we're just going to try to get our... Now we're going to say, okay, from here, so we have one, one head length here, and then we could use our, our pen and say, okay, so let's say the cap of my pen is one. So this cap here is one head length. How many head lengths to the, his seat area where he's sitting on his, his bench? One, two, three, four. So approximately four head lengths is where he's sitting on his bench. So we'll just take this and say, okay, this is one, one head length there. Second head length is there. We'll make a mark, just a tiny, okay. Third head length is here. We make a little mark. Just make sure we're using our same measurement. And then here, one, two, three, four, and it's a little bit larger actually. Okay, so that's about where he's sitting. And then here we have and then we can say how many head lengths to where his back starts to straighten out a little bit. It's on an angle, so one head length there, two head lengths there, three, a little bit under three. So we'll say here, we'll use the other side just so we, so that's one, two, three, Okay, and then his, uh, the tails of his tuxedo are out this way here. Now we're going to so we'll do some hair first here, see if we can get some hair going. Okay, and the ear's about halfway. So the ear's about halfway, top of the ear's about halfway to the uh, chin. S same with the eyes, about halfway on the head. So you just have to get a, a and he, he's looking up a little bit too. So we're gonna make his eyes a little higher here because we notice that he's kind of, his head is tipping up a little tiny bit. So we'll, we'll try to make that noticeable. And if you have a little bit of an issue where you, you your your drawing gets you just lift up a little bit with a kneaded eraser. I'm just making very light indications of where I see things. His lips, his top lip is here. Then he has the lower portion of his underneath his uh bottom lip this by his chin there and then his chin is rounded here and a small dot for his nostril there and we'll try to paint these details in later with our brush His eyebrow, eyelid, 
eyelashes. And if it doesn't turn out perfect, no worries. You want to capture, if we did this in a larger format, it would be a little bit easier to capture, let's say, Emil's likeness. Or, or you, like if you're going to be doing a different musician, let's say, or a, uh, someone different um, that you might be drawing. You always have to remember that if you go larger with your painting, you're going to be able to capture more detail. If we're doing a smaller painting like this, it's a little bit harder to capture all the details. Like, let's say, to really refine things, to make it look really closer to, you know, the person you're trying to um, draw. But I think we can get a we can get it pretty close. We can I think we'll be able to do a good job on this. But again, if you go a little bit larger with your painting and drawing, you'll probably get a better result with getting uh, the exact look you want to get. But so here we're just doing the jacket and the shirt, and then we have the tuxedo tie. Okay, now that when we look here, we just want to look at the lines and say, all right. I'll try to get something we can use to... Um... So I'm just going to look here and say, okay, his chin is here. The bottom of his chin is there. So you can kind of see his bow tie is right below his bottom of his chin. And then as we go down a little bit further, his tuxedo shirt uh, starts to flow out a little bit, and his jacket. So you can see his arms and his um, shirt are starting to angle this way. So we just got to remember that. We'll try to check our angles as we go. Okay, and then we have his shirt like that there. So that's... his arm there and again we can paint the details now again we're gonna look we're just about we're gonna get close to taking a break now because we're doing a lot of work we're, we're really kind of working hard to get our angles correct and our measurements correct our scale correct so again we'll take we're saying uh, in this picture um, what ha one head length two head lengths three head lengths okay so three head lengths is about where his arm starts to angle and we have like the elbow area. So we already have one, two, three. We already have these marks, so we already have that marked. So that's about where his arms angle out toward the piano. Okay, <clears throat> now we have his cuff of his sleeve there. And these photos also are, when you take photos of the TV set, I do this often, they sometimes become a little distorted and you might see things appearing larger than they would in normal life. And that does happen when, you're, when we're taking pictures of the things off of TVs and so forth like that. So, but that works to our advantage because it looks a little more interesting. It kind of breaks the, kind of breaks the um, pattern of just ha everything having to look, you know, exactly like real life, let's say. So... His, I'm just going to look here and say, all right, his, okay, his tuxedo is here. And then just above the elbow, we start to see some folds. So I'm going to do those folds here. And again, we'll paint those in. These are all darks in here. And then we have that little bit of his tails, his tuxedo there, and then his tuxedo flows pretty much. He's got his other arm over here. And his hand is going to go like this. So we're just going to kind of, we're just going to get our feel for that. His hands are here, and his tuxedo here and then his his legs come down like this and this is, these are all going to be darks in here and then we're going to all right so we're going to we're going to take a break we did a lot of work we did 
um, the figure here now. So we have um, the figure done. We're going to come back. We'll start working on the piano um, and the uh, keys and the hands. And I think we'll be ready to paint. So we're, we're really made a lot of progress here. And again, we're just going to uh, take a break. We did a lot of work. Let's uh, re... Uh, Regain some of our concentration and our patience and our um, mindset as we come back. We'll come back, look at this after 10, 15 minutes of taking a break. You'll be surprised. You might see some things you want to adjust a little bit or whatever. All right, so we'll come right back in just a minute. Hope you're having fun. This is a challenge for anybody doing watercolors, figures, things like this are always a challenge. So no worries. We have to start somewhere. Let's do a beautiful painting of a concert piano player uh, at a concert, and it's exciting. Just and that thought in itself is really exciting. And then we'll have, bring that excitement to the paper with our pencils and our paints and try to recreate something we really like. Okay, it's Chris Petri again. Hey, we're just coming back from a break, and I thought, what a better time. Please consider subscribing. There's a little subscribe button just below in the screen there. If you subscribe, you're going to get videos like this every week. We make two to three videos every week, and you're going to be, once you hit that subscribe button, you won't miss anything. You'll always get videos coming in every week. It'll alert your phone, your device, to let you know there's new videos coming out. And uh, we'll, we paint all types of watercolor paintings here. We do figures, we do flowers, we do boats, seascapes, landscapes, we do street scenes. So we do a lot of different subject matter here, so you don't want to miss out. This is perfect. Watercolor is a great medium, and you can have a lot of fun with it. You can pick and choose the videos. So if, I, if, you, have a, if you do subscribe to me on this, on this channel here, you'll be able to, you know, if you like a video, great. You watch it, you can work on it, draw and paint it. Or if you find that it's something you're, you're not interested in the subject matter, or you find that you're not really so interested in a certain thing or two, you just wait, you know, you just wait till the next video comes out. So when you're subscribed, you'll always get that new video coming in and you'll find something you like because we're always changing our subject matter here on um, this channel. So always don't worry. You're always going to have something to work on. Um, and you might love figure work, something like this. This might be your real favorite thing to paint. So we're going to do more of these, work these into our schedule, and we're going to be doing, but we'll do all the rest too. We're going to still do flowers, still do boats, still do street scenes. We're going to do ink and washes. We're going to keep doing all the things we normally do here on this channel, but we're just going to incorporate maybe some more figure work uh, now and again because there's a lot of people that want to also do figure work, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And we'll just go step by step and show you how to do everything, okay? So let's get back into it here. Top secret information. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we said we had those hash marks. We wanted to get those on first, right, when we started our drawing. Just makes life easier for you. You have less to worry about if you already have hash marks. So now when we come back in to do some more work, we already have our piano figured out where it's going to start up here. We don't have to start looking around and all that. We already have our light source up here. We're good. We, the other hash marks we already have. So here, top of this, here is the piano, concert grand piano. And it comes out like this. And it goes like this. I'm just contour drawing. So I'm looking very carefully at the, uh, at the uh, photograph. Now I notice Let's take a look across here. Let's see if we can find a reference point where this side of the piano is. If I hold my pen across here, I can kind of see it's about... Okay, all right, so it's about, about there, a little bit below the second head level. So about there. Okay, good. Okay, and it's in on an angle. So, and it's also angled this way, so we want to capture that. We'll make sure the angles are the same. Good, the angle is the same. Okay, now we have a slope like this. Wow, that's pretty cool. Comes down this way. <clears throat> Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, 
Okay, that's pretty good. And I always say this, and you'll hear me say this a lot on my channel, a lot of times pencil drawings don't look, in essence, they don't look correct. They look a little bit odd. So when you're drawing, don't ever get intimidated by the way your pencil drawing looks. The main thing is you have to wait until you're already in there painting and painting away until you start to see everything come together. So to me right now, when I look at this pencil drawing, I say that a lot of things to me look kind of funny. They don't look correct. The next thing you know, I'm going to be in there erasing. But over years and years and years of drawing and painting, I already know that the pencil drawing is just a preliminary guide once we start going in and painting everything, it's going to look correct. It's going to look good. So if your pencil drawings don't look great or they don't look correct, you don't worry about that. You just go with what you have, do your drawing. If you're taking the steps and just scaling everything the way we are, you're going to be good. It's, every painting doesn't come out perfect anyway, so no worries about that. But again, you always have to remember that you, your pencil drawings are going to look a little bit strange. They're not going to look accurate because you have... Everything is missing. All the information, or well not a lot of, you know, a lot of the information is missing, right? We don't have any skin tones. We don't have any lights and darks. We don't have any paint on the paper. There's so many things we don't have on this paper right now. It should look funny. It shouldn't look correct, right? Does that make sense? All right. Hopefully you understand that. You got to, don't worry about it. Get your drawing done. Take your time. And then that's it. You don't worry about it. And you get in there with your paints and you start painting. Okay, now we're going to do the piano over here, and we're just going to take our time. We're just noticing this is here, this is here. Again, we're not looking for every detail on the piano. We're just trying to capture a little bit of what we see. Okay, now his hand is here, his right hand is here. Now already I can kind of see the piano. Okay, that, that works. His hands are going to look a little big. That's fine. Um, okay. About here. Here's where we can kind of see this is straight. If you can imagine, you see how that's kind of straight up and down, plumb. So this is plumb over here. So this should be the same way too. So here I need to come out a little bit like that. More. And then you can kind of see how that's plumb. So here in the picture, you can see that's straight. And this is straight too, all the way down. So if we were to draw a line, just like this, which we're going to do, then we have... We have the keys. Here, we draw this line in. Pretty much this one's straight. A little bit of an angle, not much. Straight there. Then we have... Okay, the keys are going to be here. Like that. I'm just going to make these a little bit. Okay. So I just adjusted that a line a little bit there. And then here's going to be the white of the keys. Two thirds over from here. So here we have this in on an angle. Okay, this. This widens just a little bit. You can kind of see here, it's a little thinner down here and a little wider here. That's showing the the keyboard as it goes in, as it trails into the distance and the photograph, it gets a little smaller. Um, you can actually exaggerate that if you want. You can exaggerate that more than in the photograph and that'll kind of make it look a little more interesting. 
Although when we start to do that, we could get we. So let's just we'll keep it with like the photograph. Let's not let's not get too adventurous. And then here the I wouldn't get too. I would just kind of maybe make some slight marks there for the keys of the piano, but I wouldn't get any detail in there. I would just leave it pretty much light and dark. These are the whites of the keys and the darks in the keys. Okay. I'm going to move his hands a little bit closer. I'm going to make his arms a little longer. Okay. And then I'm just going to leave I'm just going to try to That's all just to kind of get the shape of the hand. I'm not going for like a perfect hand here. Just the basic flow of the shape. His hands are kind of softly just flowing down onto the keyboard like a waterfall. Just like that, you know, it's, there's nothing too um, uh, intricate about this that we're going to do. We're just going to make maybe make a couple, there's going to be a couple shadows. And that's good. So we have the hands flowing softly onto the keyboard. Um, we have his sleeves here of his... Uh, tuxedo there's some lights and darks let's let's make some lines here just to remember where the light and darks are so we're we're just going to try to put a very light pencil line on the uh, on the uh, tuxedo here a W here for white. W here for white. So I make a really light, light, super light W. Just remember when I'm painting not to go over that. We're going to leave that white paper. And the bow tie will remember is white as well. We're also going to, let's, uh, when we do the face, let's, what we might do is his the light on his face is not quite as bright, obviously, as the white tuxedo shirt and bow tie. Because there's flesh color here on his face, so we we might go over his face here with a flesh tone, very, very light, because we want to have that real bright light uh, on, on his face here. So, we're going to... Uh, Okay, so everything looks good. All right, so we have everything ready to go. We're ready to paint. We're going to take another break. We're going to take lots of breaks here. Our concentration was really, you know, we're working at a really good pace here. So our concentration, we need to let it ourselves rest a little bit, and then we can come back. And then I kind of see here, maybe that's a little bit... There we go. I'm just looking at some of the, the shadows. There's a light, a triangular bit of light here. So I just try to capture some of that. And we'll fill this in when we're painting to get our light and shadow on his uh, tuxedo and the highlights in his face and his hair. 
and the keyboards and the hands. So we're going to do everything next on the next uh, segment here. Let's just take a quick break and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We just took a break. We're ready to paint. I have a number five Da Vinci Pure Kalinske Sable watercolor brush. This is a travel brush. It's really a nice brush. You can actually take this with you on the go. You can remove this, uh, put this into your knapsack if you'd like to do outdoor painting. This is a great brush to have. Um, I have a, a set of these and I have all the sizes, I guess, in this, the main set. And uh, this is a number five. This is really like probably the most common size I use when I'm use when I'm doing like a, a five by seven type painting here. So we're going to start out with this brush. It's all we need. We're going to start out with some flesh tones. So we would just go in with our cadmium red, a little bit of yellow ochre, and uh, I think that's. We're going to go with a really super light wash uh, on this because. Um, we're in the bright spotlights here in this concert photograph and we had the photograph up. Now we're going to use our paints, so I have to use this area for paints. I really can't have the photograph up right now. But we've been looking at the photograph quite a bit of time, so we kind of know what we're uh, looking at there. And then again, again, a touch of cadmium red, touch of that, just a tiny bit of yellow ochre. And I work that together until it looks pretty good. And then what we do is we're going to start out. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we start in one place and do not lift our brush. We just take the one spot. We're going to start at the nose. And then we're going to carefully do the wash. And if it does go outside the bounds of the face, that's not going to be a problem because we're going with a dark background on this. So this is all going to be dark background, so you don't have to worry if you go over your lines, but I would try to stay within the lines of the head and um, try to keep the brush on the paper at all times. Don't lift until you're pretty much done um, placing the paint into the majority of the head here, the face. Then we'll go in and quickly get some blue and we'll put some blue, cerulean blue, into the side of the face where the cheek is and the side, the ear, and this section with the blue paint just to give it some of that cool, cool wash. So let's start out. Okay, we start out with the nose. And then we start out and then we just go right around. You can go into the hair, but keep the brush on the paper at all times. Do not lift the brush up, whatever you do. And then just work that like that back and forth and into the hair is fine. Good. I rinse the brush. I pick up my blue, cerulean blue, and quick back in again. Back in again once we have that blue. Let's do the blue. And let's just get some blue in there on the side over here. It's got to be fast, so you really got to go back in quick. Already you can kind of see I got a spot there that maybe is a little bit unpleasant. Let's see if I can Blend that a little better. There we go. And that's fine. There we go. So we have the flesh tones here. Let's go right in down here. We're going to work on the hands. Flesh tone on the hands. Again, same thing. Just let's... Here, the hands are not as... And then some blue for shadowing on the underside of the hands. Like that. And then in the picture, the same thing. Some shadows on this side of the hand and over here. And, and there we have it. We have we have the, the face and the head with our flesh uh, tones on there. First wash, hands. Now 
we're going to um, we're going to start um, let's start doing some of the washes for the piano. Only thing is we have to be really careful not to lean into the other paint here. So I would say if you can if you can start painting and not have an issue with leaning into the paint, that's fine. It takes a little bit of practice. You can figure it out. So I'm going to go back in and brown, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. We're going to do some ivory black, Payne's gray. We'll mix up our blacks too. And our Payne's gray, our ivory black. We're going to start doing our piano here. Straight paint. I don't have any water in this. And wherever I see light, I'm going to leave lights. So I'm leaving that light. There's a very tiny line in the crease where the top of the piano flows down into the main uh, area where all the, the piano wires are. And then this flows across here. So I'm just taking my time looking back and forth at the photo all the time. I'm trying to just use the, I'm using the photograph to um, sort of find all the lights and darks. So I'm doing all the darks first. Then here, French ultramarine blue, dark. This is another area of darks here. So while the flesh tones of the hands and the face are drying, I'm uh, working on the piano. And what's good about the piano is it's all... It's uh, It's all really that super dark darks. So that's where we kind of have a easier time here. We just know certain areas are just going to all be the darks. No big deal. Kind of easy to get these in. We don't want to do anything uh, near the hands and the face right now because we have to let that dry. So let's let that dry quite a bit. I would say 15-20 minutes should be good. And then here we have some blue so I'm drying off my brush on my apron. You can use a um, sponge or a tissues. So I'm controlling the... I'm controlling the uh, water, how much water is on my brush. by using the sponge or a tissue. So when I rinse my brush, I dab it on a tissue or my apron quick, take off some of the water, and then I go straight into the paint. And that's how you get these really strong, um, great darks here, just straight paint. And this too, uh, Will, his pants are going to be his tuxedo, the pants by the piano here, they're going to be darks and that flows right from the bottom of the piano upwards. And you can just mix around the paints, change up a little bit. I wouldn't use the same mixture the whole time. I would try to... Now the thing is, does this make sense? Uh, stick to your game plan of using your photograph 
accurately. So definitely stick to where you see the darks, the darkest darks, just paint those in. The darkest darks, straight paint, blues, burnt umber, a little bit of maybe burnt sienna mixed in there too if you want. You know, a little bit of the black, um, ivory black, Payne's gray. Just get those super darks in there. Mix them up a little bit, you know, makes it look a little more interesting. And if you stick with that game plan, and then as it... Once you get those dark darks in, you'll be fine. Underneath here, or under his arm. I'm just continuing to reference my photograph, and I'm saying, okay, I'm looking at where all the darkest darks are. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm just... Hit, Getting all those darkest darks in. And uh, I see a little bit there, a little shadow there, there. And then you'll find that if you, you're looking at that photo, constantly referencing your photograph, you'll you'll get everything pretty accurate. And then here, and then you have some folds that have those triangular shapes. So you just you get those in. Some are flowing round, some are Summer going down like that. And for those creases. Now here, we're gonna start to get into some of the blue. So we just go in and let's mix some blue in there. And we're just going to get some of those blue medium tones. So we're starting to go lighter now. There's some darks in there too. And I would leave the... Okay, so he has a spotlight behind him. Here we can sort of, things are, the focal point is not His, um, like this isn't the focal point, like the, the tuxedo and some of these areas here, so that's why we can just splash a little bit there and those are some shadows. Okay, now we've let some areas dry, perhaps too long, but we'll just work with it. Okay, that's a little bit lighter, cobalt blue. tend to never do that. Let's, that's a bad habit. Don't try to erase when you're painting. That's really not good to do. I sometimes do that out of uh, not concentrating correctly. That gets me in trouble every time trying to do that. And if that makes sense, you'll know why, because 
if you leave a line on your paper when you're painting, you'll tend to paint over the line and, or try to paint up to the line, which will, and if you see that the line is incorrect, right away your first thing is I have to make sure I fix that line because I know I'm going to paint over it, but if you try doing it while the paint is wet, then it even becomes worse, so that's why I say that. But it's not a big deal. And another thing I would say is you, you kind of see when you're painting, you, you sort of see where lines might have gone off a little bit because now you're having more information on your paper and you're starting to see, okay, now I can see where some of my issues might be where I drew something in not quite perfect. And what I'll do is I'll, once this dries here, I'll flow this dark shadow into the bottom of the the, ja uh, the uh, tuxedo jacket. So right now this is too light through here, if you can see that, uh, regarding the photograph. So I will go in here and I'll go over a dark, I'll put a darker wash in here, all through here, to um, tie in with the bottom of this uh, jacket here, the sleeves. And then over here too as well. This needs to have a little small strip of dark here. And um, we're going to put darks up to the jacket here. And I think this needs more, this needs some warm tones. We really got very cool with the, um, with some of the washes here. So let's add some alizarin crimson and uh, let's add some alizarin crimson and some yellow ochre just to and you can do that after it's probably better to wait till this dries so let's take a break and let this dry some but trying to get some warm and cool in here. We used a lot of darks and blues and, and the dark brown and I think it looks better if we just add some of that little bit of color in there. Just that little bit of color helps make it look a little bit better. And uh, I think we're looking pretty good. So let's uh, take another break and uh, this way we're not um, getting to, um, you know, having a little bit of a, that tired feeling when we start to lose our concentration. Better off just taking another break, 15, 20 minutes, take a break. We've been working just about 20 minutes now. Let's take another break and we'll continue on. We'll finish up. I think we're pretty close to finishing now. We did all the main, uh, really key areas of the painting, I think, that we have to um, have almost a, you know, 100% complete painting. We just have to do the um, some of the details in the face and the hair the keys of the piano and the background and a little bit of the shadowing in the jacket here and I think we'll be okay. All right, so we'll come back and we'll do a uh, maybe two more sessions. I think we'll do another 15, 20 minutes to get some of these other details in. Rest of the piano, the hair, face, you know, we'll do some face uh, details with the hair and the eyes and the nose, some shadows, kind of get that going good. And then once we do that, we'll just do our background last. We'll let everything dry 100% before we do the background, which is another key point. Let things dry, take breaks. Of course, when you take breaks, things automatically dry and you have a lot easier time with your paintings. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, we're back and we're gonna start in. We're gonna get some more details going here. So we took a nice 10, 15 minute break. Um, we're gonna go in, let's get some facial, uh, features in here a little more, some shadowing. So I'm going to go with some uh, raw umber and some raw umber and a little bit of uh, cobalt blue. And I just want to see if I can maybe get some shadowing under the eye there, the eyebrow. And then there's a really dark dark, so I can go right in here, get some really, really dark dark. If I need to dry off my brush a little first before I go in, I tap on a something a little bit and we'll just get his and we will also go 
go back in over here. Again, we're trying to get some We're going to get a little bit of the dark there alongside his nostril and then also with the bridge in the nose here. There's a little bit of a shadow there. And we'll continue with raw, uh, raw umber. And we'll do a little bit And we're just going to try to get in some shadows here. A little bit of blue, so we can mix in a little bit of cobalt blue as well. Make a little cooler shadows here and there. So we have a shadow there. Then we have a shadow just below his nostril. So I'm going to add a little more shadow over here too as well. That connects up there. And a little bit of the red, the cadmium red. I just want to get a little bit of the warmer over here. Warmer flesh tone there. And there's going to be hair over here, so I'm not worried too much. I'm just trying to get a little bit of that shadow in there. There's some more blue, cerulean blue. And again, I'm just trying to stick with my game plan here of shadowing. I think we will be able to um, a little bit of hair colors, raw umber, burnt umber. Touch of cerulean blue too as well, just for some cool. So we will be able to get some good um, then here we're going to do some more, uh, I will dry off my brush a little bit and try to get some of that hair there like that. It's a little bit darker here, so we can make a little mixture over here of the hair color with a little bit of the darker mix there. That goes over the ear. And you can see some darks back here. And there's light too. There's some, there's some light on the back of Emil's uh, hair here. If you find that you've added a dark too much, no big deal. You can kind of try to let some water sit on there. Um, that that seems to be work pretty good. If you find you've 
added maybe a dark and it's a little bit a shadow or something like that you let you drop some a water droplet on there for a few minutes for a few seconds and then you just try to lift it up with a paper towel or tissue and that tends to do a good job of actually just lift off a little of that that's fine that looks better and again messing around too much with things will tend to make things look worse so I'm gonna leave that go I think that's good for right now and That looks good. We will now work on some more of the uh, dark darks over here. So we had that. I'm trying to get some of those folds in there. And at a certain point, even if things have gone off the you know, game plan a little bit when you're thinking of your painting and you're looking at the colors and different things and the shadows and the darks. As long as you keep going back to your original photograph, I think you're always going to be safer that way. So always try to go back to your original photograph and keep trying to work with the, those shadows, darks, and lights from there. And you will actually find that you'll have a good a good end result if you just keep working with that because you can't go wrong going you know working with the the darks and the lights the shadows of your painting And I never worry about little sp spots, cauliflowers, things like that, blooms, blossoms. I don't worry about that too much. It's just part of the watercolor look. I'll splash and it'll mix up some more darks here. Just. And that looks good. We got that there. Pretty good. If you have to, again, lift a few spots, no big deal. This is lighter there. And through here, too, is kind of light. There we go.
and then you add some Then we're going to go with some darks there. And some more darks here. A little bit of shadowing under there. Okay, so we are Looking good. Let's get some shadows in the, uh, we'll keep them a little bit warmer. Just a little bit of shadowing here in the, in the hands, just a little bit. We don't want to go, let's keep it nice and just a couple of shadow indications for the hands and then the keyboards here, we have a little shadowing under here, like so. That's the white of the keys. A little bit of warm in there too. And I can see right away from my uh, my drawing that I really the keyboard keyboard is quite a bit different than what it is in the photograph I didn't notice that as much when I was painting by drawing I should say so here and if I start out If I start out like that, and then do that, that looks good. Uh, you let that dry just a little bit, the darks of the keys, and then we go over it. And then I would just do a couple. That looks good. <clears throat> then we'll go with some. We'll go with some darks here, like so. And some burnt sienna. Burnt umber. Then we have a little mixture of dark and
And that's cool and warm there. Alright, so now we're going to move up to a larger brush. Let's work with a, um, maybe we'll go with an 8, uh, Raphael Kalinsky Sable round brush, number 8. And we're going to make the background dark, and I think we're good to go with our darker wash up top here. We've already completed this. This is pretty dry. This up here is pretty dry. This here's a little wet. I would say uh, we can start on the uh, the washes up above. What's going to look good? The same colors we've been using all along. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, cobalt blue. Uh, we'll mix a little bit of everything here. Lizard and crimson. Some of the uh, yellow ochre. And we can just start out and just let's start putting in some wash. We know we want to go dark for this painting. We don't want to um, and then going dark we know. Let's mix up lots of dark. Burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue. Make sure you have plenty of paint to get those darks in there. We're going to make this really, really dark, the background here. It's pretty warm where I'm painting right now, so I have to move quick now. As you can see, I'm trying to move pretty fast here. Picking up all those colors. And then as I go around um, the figure here, I just want to make sure I'm... I want to try to maybe work in a little bit of that paint. And I definitely want to make sure we go dark here. Now, if you need to use a smaller brush to go around here too as well, that's fine. I'm going to try to use my larger brush here. The key thing here is to make sure we fuse it all together. We don't want to have... Um, we want to make sure everything is fused together with our wash. We don't want to start making dark um, or, or dry, like letting it dry. We want to make sure we, let's try to, we continue doing our washes right into the other washes we just did so that they all blend together. That's the main thing. Then I take a little bit of splashing. I want to splash a little bit, give it some texture. Same thing here, mixing up plenty of darks. Straight paint, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. A little bit of lizard and crimson, yellow ochre.
Okay, I'm just splash around again a little more texture. And I try to get some of that shadow to blend up on the underside of the uh, left hand here, just so it kind of blends in nice. All right, that looks pretty good. We're going to let this dry now. That, that's the main thing. Letting this dry is important. Uh, Take a little bit of dark and just use a very small brush and just kind of soften that up a little bit. And I'll try to get some of those, um, some of the features if I can. some of the shadowing a little better if I can. Um, again, some of the... Okay, and then I'll try to sometimes I'll just try to change the uh, shadow light and darkness just to give it a little variation sometimes if it's all one like one line of just the same wash it doesn't look that good for some reason And if it's too dark, it'll lighten up. So a lot of times things do light. Of course, watercolor always lightens up a lot. About about half of what it what it looks like when we put it on. So if you put a wash on, it's gonna lighten up about half. It'll be half as dark as when you start, when when you put a wash down. You kind of see this too. Once this dries, it's gonna look lighter. It looks darker now still wet, still drying, but you'll notice that it'll, it'll look a lot lighter, actually, the background. And um, I'm going to try to get a little bit of a... a little bit of a dark there, just to kind of... like that. And also, I think we had a, a dark under here as well, where the bow tie is, and the collar here. And sometimes you look at something and say, well, I kind of know if there's light shining on something, I'm not going to have a highlight, you know, underneath the hair by the back of the, by the there's going to be a darker shadow under there by the back of uh, this section here. So sometimes when you do these little subtle adjustments to your lights and shadows, you'll notice it really makes a big difference actually. And 
the same thing with the hair, a couple more, but not too many adjustments. That, that's the thing, just a few. We might use some titanium white to do a couple highlights, we'll see. But let's let this dry 100%, we'll come back, we'll make our final few um, washes or touch-ups, and then we'll have a completed painting. All right, we're back to do the finishing touch-ups here. I hope you took a break. I hope you take lots of breaks as you do your watercolors and uh, gives you a chance to rejuvenate. You come back, you look at your work and you, and you have a more of a clearer mind on uh, how you're gonna approach the next uh, step of uh, the process you're in. So here now I'm coming back after 10 minutes of uh, taking a break, relaxing, watching a little TV, sitting in a chair. I stand when I work, so my feet get a little sore, I get a little tired, I sit down makes me feel more relaxed and I can you know, come back to my work table here, my art table, and I'll look at things and I feel refreshed and I feel like I'm seeing things more clearly. Um, so here I feel like this is a good watercolor. It looks fine. It captures all the excitement that we wanted to, the, the spotlights, the piano, the artist, Emil Galel is a Russian, great Russian pianist, uh, concert pianist, uh, classical, classical uh, musician. So I think we have everything here. Uh, you know, there, the thing is there comes a point when I decide I'm not gonna do any more uh, touch-ups and I think that's the point now where I'm feeling good about the way it looks. Uh, it seems like the more I keep going in and doing more details, sometimes it just doesn't get uh, any better. It just sort of, it kind of, it just doesn't, it looks more overworked and uh, I wanna keep it more fresh and loose. There could be things I could keep going in and touching up and maybe I will, but for right now I'm pretty happy with this. You know, sometimes I'll see a little thing like an obvious thing, certain obvious things you might want to change. Um, so here I kind of see maybe a few things, you know, like some sparkles of light here and there. I don't know if they look so good. That was actually a, just a piece of white paper. I kind of, so I go back in with a little bit of raw umber Raw umber seems to be good for doing a few touch-ups here and there. It's a warm color. Um, maybe a little more shadow in the ear here. I always seems to I always seem to want to make the uh, like the the human form. I always try to make it look a little better. It's very tough to get these things accurate. I think I, so I don't know if I captured the exact likeness here, but I think it's all right. And uh, maybe a little bit of uh, cerulean blue and some, maybe some cobalt blue. A little more shadow just on this side over here. I thought it might look a little good. According to the photograph, I'm working for the from the photograph. It looks like that shadow there looks kind of good. Looks better. A little more shadow over here. And you can add in these shadows. Um, when it's 100% dry, the paper, you can go in and add these shadows and they look fine. But if you try to do it when the paper is still wet after you've done the wash, then, and then it looks a little bit uh, difficult or it doesn't look as good. And it, again, it's gonna dry lighter. So the shadow will look lighter. It looks a little dark right now, you might be thinking. But once that dries, it'll look a little, little lighter. Maybe I'll add a touch of blue over the flesh tones here. A little bit of cerulean blue. Just to, uh, I think it looks better, a little cooler over here. It looks like that in the photograph, so I'm going to try to Capture that there and then maybe under here. A 
little bit of a touch of dark there. bit of a shadow there on the collar. There's a white collar there. And I can go in once this is 100% dry and just erase the... There's a few W's I leave here and there just to remember to keep the white paper. You can always uh, go back in and erase those later. But I think this is good. Let's peel off the tape. It'll look a lot better once we peel off the tape here. And we'll do a close-up of it too as well. But this was a lot of fun to do this. And figures are always challenging. You'll find that you'll always work on your figures, your portraits. If you're doing any kind of figure or human form, the human head, anything like that, you'll always find you'll always want to fix things. And you'll just keep working on it as you go and get better and better as time goes on. And uh, this looks pretty good, though, once it's uh, we have our... Looks like a nice crisp uh, white mat on there, which always looks good. White mats around things. We can even do that now. We can break out our... Uh, I think that looks good. And again, you can always take some white mat. And you can try different things to see how you like different looks, like cropping things down. You can crop things in. More of a square looking painting. That looks better. I think the way we have it originally looks looks good. All right, I hope everyone tries this. Have a great time with it. Don't worry about it. Do it two, three, four times. Try different people you like, maybe try different musicians. Um, you know, you could do any any personality you like in show business, musicians, comedians, uh, politicians, any any type of thing you, you find exciting, interesting, controversial, whatever it is, as long as you have an excitement about it when you're doing it and thinking about it, you're going to have a better uh, uh, finished product. So here I had a lot of excitement thinking about the great Russian pianist, Amel Galels. This is my finished painting. I hope you enjoy this and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.